Yo, this is Terrence Gaines, a.k.a. Brother Tech. And this is Nika Monford, a.k.a. Tech Savvy Diva. And you're listening to the Snob OS Show, the show for Apple snobs, where we talk all things Apple and then some. So we're going to jump right on in to the actual show. And we're going to start off with the lowdown where we talk all things Apple. Um, This just hit just like today iOS 14.4 is available and basically what I wanted people to know about this is there are some uh, exploits that were out there that Apple has patched specifically I'm just going to definitely read it Uh, one one exploit allowed for the malicious app to elevate privileges via the operating systems kernel and two more exploits involved in Apple's WebKit which could, which would let a remote attacker execute arbitrary code. Apple says all these vulnerabilities may have been actively exploited. So all that to say, um, this is a serious update, which is why I put it at the top of the show. I would <laughs> very <laughs> urge, urgently uh, suggest that you update to iOS 14.4. In addition to Uh, patching those kernels. There are a ton of things that Apple is doing with iOS 14.4, specifically watch OS 7.3, which is also available for update, which uh, moves right into Black History Month. So Mm -hmm. I want to uh, highlight some of those things, but I will get those at the bottom of this segment. So uh, for this one, just go ahead and as a note, please update your iPhones, your iPads, and your watches to either iOS 14.4 or watch OS 7.3. And also in line with that, there was an update to the HomePod and the HomePod Mini as well that was released around the same time. So okay, yeah, you, you're miss your, you're miss HomePod your Mini. Day. So you got to you, you now you need to clue us in on anytime we get some HomePod updates because you misses right. uh, smart home surround sound <laughs> Siri. Right, right. Because I I saw it it popped up on my phone and then this is my first update. So I went into you know the Home app to do it and you know I clicked of course you know, the upgrade and because they're individual devices that have to be upgraded, Mm -hmm. you have to select each device Uh to upgrade. So once you upgrade it, because in, in the home map, you have these different rooms. So I have like a living room, an office and like a a master bedroom where I have the devices in. Mm -hmm. And so because they're different rooms and they're different devices, you have to upgrade them individually. Like you would, if you have an iPad, if you have, uh, an iPhone or if you have an Apple Watch, they are considered individual devices that you have to update individually. It's all in the same, you know, window and just kind of tap it and it, you know, shows that it's being, it's downloading or whatever, but you have to do, you know, each individual one. So. All right. Up. All right. So, yeah, like I said, definitely uh, get that latest update. Uh, speaking of Apple Watch, um, there's a patent out there that suggests that Touch ID is coming to Apple Watch. So, you know, you kind of uh, see that Apple is testing um, Touch ID in the latest version of the iPad Air, where you take your thumb and kind of hover it over the button in order to unlock your phone, do certain things. Um, there's a new pat- patent out there that shows that they may put touch ID in the Apple watch to where, you know, you, instead of you, uh, right now, I don't know if you can see this, but you can't see, but I'd have to put my finger over the digital crown in order to do things like now, like do your EKG certain things. But imagine if I could actually purchases and everything. Exactly. Imagine if I could actually just rest my finger over the, uh, screen of my Apple Watch in order to uh, do purchases, in order to maybe possibly do the EKG and the uh, couple other features. So I just want to get your opinion on, do you think it's a good idea for them to um, put the Touch ID behind the screen of the Apple Watch? Or do you think they should try something else? Well, I think it is very interesting because it's not only, they're not only suggesting this 
patent for the Apple Watch, but it's for the iPhone as well. Okay. And what they're doing is they're putting the Touch ID. So, you know, we're used to buttons or, and I think we talked about this last week, we were like, how are they going to do it? Are they going to do it on the home button? Or is it going to be, you know, is it going to be on a physical button? And I think the technology is quite fascinating that you, they can put the the reader of the, the thumbprint or fingerprint underneath the existing glass mm-hmm. of, of the device. So, you know, the fact that you will be able to, to do that um, on top of the screen so you don't have to, you know, lose any screen real estate to actually place a button there. Um, and you don't have to worry about, you know, putting your finger over the right button on the perimeter of the phone. Um, and I think as far as the Apple Watch, I was reading um, this article that we were reading it from is from Forbes, and it indicated, you know, now if you make a purchase or, or you know, anything like that on your Apple Watch, you have to enter in your passcode. Mm-hmm. And we all know that the screen real estate isn't that much. Plus, when you're typing in your passcode, it's in white on a black background, so it's easily visible. So this seems to me to add another layer of security whereas you can just hover your finger over the screen or tap the screen and it can read your fingerprint and you don't necessarily have to worry about typing in your passcode in the event that someone is looking over your shoulder or someone is trying to spoof the the number or so to speak so i i think it's a I think it's just a new innovation. I think it sounds pretty cool. Now, how they're going to implement this is going to be interesting to see because I did see in the article it said that there are other companies that have this, but um, as we know, Apple isn't necessarily, you know, you know, stuck on the first to do it. They want to do it right. So mm-hmm. um, I'm not sure when, when I read that comment, I, it made me think so. Whoever already has this in play, is it not that great? Um, for them to kind of point out the fact that they're not first, but they're, you know, they'd rather wait and, and get it right. So, right. You know, and then they can kind of use the, you know, to, to add on to that, um, they can use the Apple watch as a proving ground for touch ID because the Apple watch is less expensive. It's a smaller device. So if they did try it, and something didn't work or it didn't work as designed or they have to expand, you know, they can do it on a smaller device with a smaller footprint, uh, less expensive device, get it right there on the Apple Watch and then move it over to the larger, more expensive, more popular iPhone to where it works as designed out of the box, because mm-hmm. a lot of more uh, more people are going to complain about touch ID not working on their iPhone versus it working on the Apple watch. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, they can keep both technologies. They can use touch ID and they can keep the, uh, um, the, the sensor on the digital crown. So if it don't work, they just turn it off, keep it moving. Mm -hmm. If it does, then they can kind of expand it. Right. And it, and it sounds like, um, based on this article is that, um, while this touch ID under the glass, um, is on other, um, phones, no, it's not. It's not on any other smartwatch device. So, um, you know, you have. I think Samsung has, has a device. Um, I think Google may have a device. I think Fossil. So there are a bunch of different smartwatch makers, but none of them have the authentication with the thumbprint or fingerprint under the glass. So. Okay. All right. All right. So let's keep it in the. Um... Apple Realm, of course, uh, Apple has launched a new time to walk feature in Apple Fitness Plus, which basically um, a- Apple has curated a range of audio stories that you can listen to on your AirPods or wireless headphones while walking. So basically, they have put together, you know, a couple of uh, podcasts and uh, stories that what it does is instead of you having to you know, use your phone, set it all up. It works on your Apple Watch. Um, you can pair it with the AirPods or your AirPods Max or any other Bluetooth headphones. And then boom, the, you know, based on the duration of the walk, based on, you know, you can actually listen to these particular stories. And they've got um, Dolly Parton is one of the episodes. Uh, NBA player uh, Draymond Green. Money um, Green. 
Yeah. Uh, musician Sean Mendez and Emmy Award winner Uzo Abduba. Aduba. Uh, Aduba. Is that... Um, uh, um, orange is the new black. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Crazy I, eyes. Yeah. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, basically this is just a way for people to get a quick walk in without going to jump through all the hoops of finding the finding music, finding their iPhone, setting everything up. Boom. You just listen to these things while you're walking because uh, quote me if I'm wrong, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, more people tend to listen to music when they are exercising, whether it be doing hit, whether it be doing cardio, but a walk is a walk. So I find personally myself when I'm actually just walking, I'll listen to a podcast. But when I'm actually working out, working out, working out, I kind of want to get amped up. So I'll listen to some more upbeat, up tempo music. So I just want to get your uh, thoughts on that. Same. Um, I usually power up a, a podcast um, if I'm going for, you know, just a, a walk or if I go to take the dog out for a long walk, you know, I already have something queued up and, and ready to play. But for those, I guess, folks who, um, I guess, I guess it is a, a, a audience for it. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> it may be, it's a quick way um, for folks if they don't know how to, to get going or they want something to get them going, to have something already preloaded would, would be helpful. Yeah, right. Um, I would also be helpful is <laughs> more content because, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know if I'd be listening to any of these folks. You know, I'm a fan of the Warriors, but I don't know if I want to listen to Draymond Green talk during the podcast. I don't know. Again, you know, that could be just me. I, that's just me totally not having any sort of research done <laughs> on this. But, you know, just the lineup that they have right here, you know, they I think they'll need a little bit more content in order for this to actually take off. But time will tell. I think it's a, a good idea. We'll just have to wait and see if it actually uh, takes hold. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I think they need some more content. I know all these people except for musician Shawn Mendes. I, I don't know who that is. But um, uh, depending on what the content is, I don't know if it's like, you know, the like the Calm app or Headspace. They have like... Um, like the stories you can listen to to like help you fall asleep. So I don't know if their episodes are, you know, if Dolly Parton's talking about how she wrote Jolene or if Draymond is talking about, you know, game six in the finals. Or, right. You know, I, I'm not sure what the content is behind these stories. So that would be, you know, I guess a, a note to, to kind of figure out what I want to listen to them talk about just random things or reading a story or, is it something that I may be interested in based on, you know, that person's experience? So. Right. Yep. So we'll see. You know, I'll have to listen to one so I can <laughs> make sure I have a more educated opinion versus just saying I don't want to listen to that junk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right. know what it is. So I don't listen to it. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. So keep it moving. Uh, this is probably take up the chunk of the lowdown segment but apple is um putting their putting their money where their mouth is we talked about some of their other efforts in the past to where they are uh, making sure they show that they are for uh, racial equality um this is more of a uh display versus actually putting you know billions and millions of dollars behind it but they are celebrating black history month across pretty much all of their platforms and I'll just give you kind of like like a breakdown of some of the um, things they'll be doing for Black History Month. Uh, for instance, uh, there'll be a hub in the App Store highlighting black owned businesses and developers. Uh, Apple Music will get a curated playlists, essays and original videos and other content highlighting black artists. Apple Maps is getting curated recommendations from Eat Okra, which highlights black owned restaurants. Uh, Apple plans to curate stories focused on black families and experiences in the Apple TV and the Apple News apps and highlight black authors in Apple Books and Apple Podcasts. So pretty much across and there's a bunch of other ones that I didn't even mention, but that's just kind of like the the sense of, you know, get you a sense of what Apple is trying to do uh, for Black History Month. Basically, just uncover, uh, curate and expose a lot of their uh, customers 
to, you know, current um, black history, because, you know, when you think of black history month in your average school, all they do is talk about Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King. They talk about, you know, uh, George Washington Carver, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's about it. Right. The ones that everybody and I use everybody loosely knows. Right. But the whole point is, you know, we're making history now. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's pretty cool that Apple is doing this to highlight what's going on in black history right now versus just, you know, putting up some quote from Martin Luther King on their website. You know, they've done that before, but now it seems like, you know, with the whole civil unrest that happened earlier this summer, you know, they are actually continuing that work uh, into uh, Black History Month for this year. So I just want to get your opinions on that. Um, I think this is pretty dope. Um, And I think we've seen, you know, things like I think McDonald's does like a Black History 365 type of deal Mm -hmm. where they talk about it all year. Mm -hmm. But I think Apple is making a concerted effort to use all their platforms to highlight not only the past, because we I think a lot of times we get so bogged down in, you know, the innovations of the past which are amazing and which, you know, need to be talked about. I know I was reading something on, I was trying to look it up uh, while you were talking. Um, There's a chemist who who came up with like three like major things like that everybody used. And I was like, oh, I had no idea that that was him. I have to look it up. I, I think I bookmarked it to get his name and to get those three things that he did. But I think there's so much history now being made. We'll still, we're still having first, um, I think today, um, Roslyn Brewer was just announced as the CEO of Walgreens. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a first, but it's a very close to first. There have only been two black women who have been CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. And as of right now, um, prior to her new promotion, there are none. Right. So of all the CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, she is currently the only black woman. And she was CEO, I think, of uh, Sam's Club. She's leaving COO from Starbucks. But we we make history literally every time you hear someone say the first black person to mm-hmm. dot dot dot. Mm-hmm. That's history. That's not that's black history. That's American history. And I think pulling in what's what's going on now is as equally as pointing as honoring you know the historic first as well because. If you listen to certain news stations or certain people, you would think that all black people have to uh, bring to the table are things in sports and entertainment. Mm -hmm. While that's great and that's true, we are touching every aspect of society, business, finance, you know, executive um, leadership, Um, in addition to sports and music, medicine, I mean, the the lead scientist for the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine was a black woman. Mm -hmm. So those type of things that are happening right now, that is black history in 2021 need to be highlighted as well. And I think it's, it's great that they are, they're bringing this up and, you know, um, I, I think it's key and I think it's necessary and it's most certainly important. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely, you know, um, I saw a lot of people, you know, they were uh, looking at the uh, uh, some of the things that Apple is doing. And of course, you know, people, you know, don't have all the information. So they're like, did anybody ask for, a, uh, you, you know, a this and that and the, and the third, which, you know, in some cases is a valid question because there are some brands over the summertime who are just like, yeah, we're going to black out our social media walls and it's like and eh, that's nice you know but, but i think I, right right but i think apple um has shown with some of the things that we've talked about leading up to now that had they have put hundreds of millions of dollars into stem programs and they've put the you know they've got plans to put up buildings you know we just talked about it last exactly episode. exactly you know uh uh creating a new center for diversity you know and uh, starting all these programs at hbcus so that stuff takes money and that stuff takes effort so when they then come around to a black history month and do something like you know segue into releasing a black unity apple watch edition edition mm-hmm. it's just icing on the cake yeah. versus 
you know, or oh, that's all they're going to do is just come up with a limited edition watch that they're going to mm-hmm. try to sell and make more money. Yes. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, they've they're shown putting money back into it. Exactly. Exactly. So that leads me, of course, to my next story. Uh, for the month of February, Apple is releasing a Black Unity Apple Watch edition. So this is not just a watch face. This is a, an actual limited edition aluminum Apple Watch. So it's their entry level um, um, uh, Apple Watch Generation 6 watch, but it's going to be a limited edition um, Black Unity watch. And basically, uh, the Black Unity collection pays homage to the rich tradition and craft of quilting in the black community and celebrates the colors of the Pan-African flag, red for the blood that unites the people of the African diaspora and was shed for the liberation, the color black for the people whose existence is affirmed by the flag and the color green for the vibrant natural wealth of Africa, the motherland. So I just wanted to do a quick little um For those who are watching, I just wanted to show what the actual watch looks like. So in addition to the limited edition Apple Watch um, uh, device itself, you can also get the watch face, which has the Pan-African colors. And in addition to buying the Apple Watch, the limited edition Black Unity version, it will come with the um, the band that has the same colors or if you already have an Apple Watch, you can pay an extra 50 bucks and get the Apple Watch band in the Pan-African colors. So the watch itself is, like I said, an aluminum uh, Series 6 edition, and it starts at $399. So if you want to get the watch itself, $399 will give you the watch and the band, or you can just pay uh, $50 for the actual band, uh, which and you can get the watch face, which I actually took time you probably can't see it because technology but <laughs> i oh, have to show on the other screen so yeah, yeah, yeah oh yeah then you know it's a good idea let me in the smaller screen <laughs> yeah, yeah let me switch back all right so and you still can't see it because serious like all right there it is there it is so i actually have the watch face on my watch right now and when the band comes available, I'm going to go ahead and uh, purchase that as well. So it'll only be available in February. So stay tuned for that if you are interested. And let's also remind the the listeners that some a pro, uh, part of the proceeds from the sale of this watch mm-hmm. are being um, poured into um, racial equality and justice organizations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so I think that's key. And alluding to something that you mentioned um, with the previous story, I saw on Twitter as well the people that were kind of downing it, and it just really, it really annoyed me. I have to say because Apple has been consistently doing things to close the racial divide from their end for what they can do. And people just kind of negate that. And I know we're Apple focused show, so we love Apple. We talk about Apple, but these are tangible things that they are doing to improve the community and bring awareness to the issues that face our community. And for people just to say, oh, they're just doing a watch, you know, ugh, who right. asked for this? This could be more. It, it really, to me, what that can do is show to other companies who may not be as forward thinking as Apple on this front. It's like, well, it doesn't matter. Nothing we could do. Cause They're just going to clown it anyway. Happy. Right. Right. So yeah. Why do anything? It's about, it's the same thing with the, um, the Tubmans are coming back. And when I say Tubmans, I mean, you know, here Tubman being on the $20 bill, mm-hmm. I saw people complaining, you know, who needs this? Why are they doing this? Nobody asked for this. At the same time, these are the same people yelling representation matters. Right. And my thing is, can't we have both? Can't we have the visual representation of what that means to get one of the most racist presidents off of the $20 bill? Right. The racist. Freedom fra- <laughs> right. And put a freedom fighter on a $20 bill at the same time being able to pay black women or, you know, uh, have, um, do instead of, you know, just a physical representation of money or dollars of this, but also, you know, financially, um, provide, you know, 
systematic programs to help increase the wealth of black women and black people can't we do both right why right. do you just have to pick one right and so to answer your not to answer to comment on what you were saying i didn't get annoyed at the people who what i saw was apple and we're going to talk about it next week because next week will officially be black history month but uh, they're doing a apple is doing a black unity challenge to where if you close your rings for seven consecutive days in the month of February, you'll get this black unity uh, badge uh, or medal rather in Apple Watch. And everybody was like, who asked for that? Nobody needs that. Right. So I didn't get upset because. One, I know Apple's doing more than just that. So that's number one. And two, um, I just like you said, you know, nobody is going to you can't please everybody. Right. So so knowing that and three, maybe on a on small scale, I've been victim or I've been complicit in doing that before as well. You know, I'll see a company that just says, well, we're just doing this and without doing any additional research, you know, try to attribute it to oh, they all they're doing is, you know, so. Uh, with me being on the inside, kind of not really, because I don't work for Apple, you know, all that stuff. But I'm an Apple fan, you know, so I I do research on them and I, you know, know a little bit more a bit about the company. I can say, well, that's not true with Apple because they're doing blah, 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 blah. You know, maybe this will, you know, force me to when I am looking to patronize a company, you know, patronize as in like support them or <laughs> patronize and as in clown them. Right. <laughs> I will first, you know, see uh, what's really going on before I make a comment, because what I don't want to be is hypocritical. So I do do want to make sure. So that's kind of the reasons why I didn't get upset. So speaking of which, you mentioned uh, some of the efforts, some of the things that, you know, Apple is doing as a result of this watch. So I just wanted to read off some of them as part of it. As part of this effort, Apple is supporting six global organizations to help advance their missions in promoting and achieving equality and civil rights uh, in the U.S. and around the world. Black Lives Matter Support Fund via the Tides Foundation, European Network Against Racism, International Institute on Race, Equality and Human Rights, Leadership Conference Education Fund, NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund, and the Souls Gown, uh, Grown Deep. So those are just some of the... Um, uh, organizations that a uh, purchase of this watch or support of Apple, that's where some of the contribution will be going to. So I just wanted to highlight that. Yeah, you could look at it on its face and say, well, all they're doing is trying to get more money out of you by creating this watch and creating this watch band, you know, when they really could be doing something. Well, they're really actually doing, they're something. Really doing something. So, yeah, yeah, just wanted to highlight that. So definitely if you are, uh, are are looking to support, you know, you we can vouch and say this is not just a flash in the pan. You know, your money, they're trying to come up with a sly way to get more of your money. You're you you are supporting a company that actually is doing things and your direct support will go to organizations in the movement. Right. It's not superficial. Right. Exactly. Yeah. All right. All right. So the last story in the lowdown, speaking of watches, um, Apple Watch uh, strikes again. They add somebody has actually uh, been discovered or saved via Apple Watch because it helped police find a kidnapping victim. So basically, I uh, just wanted to read the quick story. According to Fox San Antonio, a woman used her Apple Watch to call for help, revealing she had been kidnapped and that she was in trouble. Police in Selma, Alabama, were then able to use an emergency cellular ping to track the victim and discover her location in a vehicle in a parking lot. So basically, she was fighting with somebody who was trying to carjack her. You know, she didn't want to give up her car. So the guy threw her in the car. I don't know if he threw her in the back seat or threw her in the trunk. In the trunk. No, yeah, in, in, in the bed of a trunk. So it was a pickup. Yeah. So she, he threw her in the back of the bed of the pickup truck. Um, um, and then that's when she used her, her watch, 
I'm assuming she had the cellular version or she had her phone around her in order to call police and then they were to ping her location to find her. So I just wanted to put that, you know, feel good story in there about, you know, Apple Watch actually doing more than just, you know, uh, uh, testing your blood level, your blood oxygen levels and, you know, taking your heartbeat. You know, you can actually use this to actually, you know, uh, in, in the case of emergency when you don't have your phone around. Yeah, I think the guy was her boyfriend or something, and he threw her things in the back of the truck. Uh huh. And he uh, was like, you know, you know, get your stuff or whatever. Right. And when she got out to get her stuff, he got in the driver's seat. Apparently, he was driving in her car. And I mean, he, he was, was drunk. In her car. Right. And he was drunk. Right. And so when she went to get the her things out of the back of the truck, he just kind of took off. And um, that's probably whether she had the cellular version or the non cellular version, her phone was still nearby. Right. So. She can make a phone call that so way. So she can make a phone call. Yeah. 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 So there, and, and then. Steady state saving lives. Right. So there's another story in here. Um, I don't know if we talked about this one or not, but in 2016, the Find My iPhone app on the iPhone helped a mother track down her kidnapped daughter. Uh, the, the daughter. Um, had been allegedly taken against her will by an ex-boyfriend and he was arrested on kidnapping charges. It always be the people, you know, both of these stories, it involves the people who are close to you. That's a sidebar. But the fact that you, when you are in trouble, you do have something on you that you don't have to fumble around. You don't have to dig in. You can just press the button and hold it. And at the very least, you can send out an SOS. So uh, shout out to Apple watch for doing more than just telling time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, that is it for the lowdown. Let's go to second string where we talk all things tech in general. And I just wanted to do this story because me and my wife, we actually do uh, Walmart delivery for some of our groceries. But I don't know now, maybe because <laughs> uh, Walmart is starting to open a bunch of local fulfillment centers. And basically what these fulfillment centers are is they are smaller uh, fulfillment centers that are connected to, you know, currently open Walmarts. So when people like me and my wife, we do an online order to where we want, you know, food delivered or we want, you know, uh, different general products. Uh, these local fulfillment centers will actually do that fulfillment. But the cool thing or scary, I guess, <laughs> about these fulfillment centers is they're going to be staffed by robots. And basically all these robots are going to do is buzz around these local fulfillment centers and collect some of the items that people like myself will order online via the Walmart app. They'll pick up like your you know, toilet tissue or they'll pick up socks or they'll pick up commonly easily, you know, collectible items and they will zip around and they'll pick these items up and put them in a specific area. And then there'll be an actual human person that will actually collect things like food, you know, produce, any sort of perishables, meat, seafood. There'll be a human involved in that part. But anything that's non-perishable, like, you know, regular uh, Walmart items like, you know, hair care products, you know, whatever the case may be. These robots will be zipping around these local fulfillment centers and actually collecting those items. So I just wanted to get your opinion on. Do you think this is a, a good idea or or do you think this is the covid effect? And what I mean by that is now we're stuck at home. We are going to the actual locations less. So stores like Walmart are starting to evolve. But could this be like. This is the new normal. Once we're, you know, outside is open again, will these local fulfillment centers shut down or did the COVID effect actually cause something to where now they're expanding to now everything is going to be be ordered and picked up, packaged and delivered by a robot? <laughs> so uh, a couple things. You don't put this system in place, you know, in less than a year. So Walmart had to already be working on this. Uh -huh. So I don't necessarily think it may be something COVID specific. Okay. COVID may have helped speed it along. Okay. Um, and the second thing is the company that I work for, um, the manufacturing portion of it, it uses something like this. So the manufacturing people build things mm -hmm. and say if they are out of 
screws or bolts or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. there are these little um, robots similar to, to the ones that are in this story. And their sole job is if a person is using whatever trinket or doodad to do their job to build what they're building, mm -hmm. they can see when it gets to a certain level. And then this little robot will say, okay, I see your little, let me go over here and drop some more things off for this person to use to use their job. So I don't necessarily think it's going to replace anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and the company that I work for has been around a very long time and they've been using this technology for quite a while. So, and you know, we haven't, you know, laid off, laid off anybody like that in the manufacturing portion, specifically for manpower reasons. It's just another apparatus to help people. So if you're building something or you and your little doodad, if you run out of items, you don't have to stop doing what you're doing, go get some more and come back they have this little robot that will say, okay, you're down to five doodads. So let me go and give you a hundred more doodads so you can keep doing what you're doing and not have to stop. So okay. All that's right. kind of my, and I saw it in action. It was really, it was really cool because you have these little things that are just zipping around mm -hmm. and they follow these little treads in mm -hmm. the manufacturing plant that I was in. It was like these yellow little lines all over the floor. And on first glance, it's like, oh, they got a little design going. Mm -hmm. But when you see one of the little robots doing their job, mm -hmm. you see that that robot, it knows where to go for its specific item. It picks up, it goes, it follows its little track, goes, drops off its items, and then goes back to its little homing station, mm -hmm. refills itself, and then just waits until somebody needs it again. So it was pretty cool to see. All right. All right. So... We shall see if this is a mainstay. Like you mentioned, uh, this is not a overnight or two or three weeks or even six months thing. This is something that has to be, you know, uh, months, if not years ahead of time. Uh, but I think, you know, like you mentioned, uh, COVID probably sped it up or just made it more acceptable. Right. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you think, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago when manufacturing you know, was going out the window or out the door rather in the United States. And one of the main things was robots are taking over. They're laying people off, you know, things of that nature. But now with COVID and making things inaccessible, like going to a store, you know, going to do shopping, you know, I think maybe COVID made something like this to where robots are going to help or aid uh, a little bit more acceptable. You know, now that we kind of see the 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 value add versus oh, robots are just taking over. Right. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see. You know, it'd be interesting to see, you know, how Walmart does this because they are trying to compete directly against Amazon and Amazon has distribution centers everywhere, you know, but there are also Walmarts everywhere. So it makes sense for Walmart to say, hey, instead of trying to build all these brand new distribution centers, let's connect them to the tons of stores we already got and then, mm -hmm. you know, add this new technology to them. So, all right, we will see about that. So speaking of technology and robots and artificial intelligence, I got another story for you. Um, and I've seen this actually personally uh, in in works at, at my house. And basically, you know, for those who don't know, I have Alexa mm -hmm. And we've got um, a couple of different uh, devices that are Alexa enabled and you have to uh, literally tell Alexa to, hey, change the thermostat to 68 degrees or, hey, Alexa, lock my front door and she'll do those commands. But this new feature called hunches will accomp accomplish smart home tasks on your behalf. So basically what it does, it, it learns how you interact. And then it offers suggestions or hunches for other commands so much so to where it'll actually get to the point to where it will know your history, know your routine, and then actually suggest that you it do some of these things for you. Mm -hmm. In my example, and uh, I noticed it because I do have a smart lock on my front door. And when I go upstairs at night, this happened on three occasions. 
I go upstairs at night and I say, Alexa, turn off downstairs lights. And she'll say, oh, downstairs lights turned off. And then she'll say, I noticed that your front door is locked, unlocked. Do you want me to lock that too? And I'll be like, yeah, go ahead and lock it. And she'll lock it. So this is that hunches thing in action. Now, of course, the scary part about it is, of course, Skynet, right? But in addition <laughs> to that, <laughs> its feature is enabled by default. Again, that's my number one pet peeve is let me go turn it on versus into it. right versus let versus me finding out about it and say oh, i don't like this let, let me go turn it off give me the option to turn it on versus making me turn it off right so that's number one pet peeve but you know in addition to that you know this is just you know tinfoil hat type talk to where you know if we're given technology the ability to learn our habits and learn our daily routine you know is that just another step for like i said skynet <laughs> take it off but uh you know as being a person who now has a smart assistant listening around in the house now what do you think about this uh lexa hunches and do you think this is beneficial or is this like i don't want none of that so for me the 12 year old in me giggles at the name and I'm like, they could have <laughs> <laughs> <They could've laughs> came up with another name and hunching. A better name. <laughs> because whenever, when I was reading this, I was just so tickled because right. of what that word implies for, for those of us who <laughs> are uh, primarily black, I think. Uh, I think it's a, 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 a black family reunion it's, type thing. It's gotta be. Because uh, I don't, I don't, it's not mainstream. There's no way they could have come up with this if they had a significant amount of black people right. in the room when they came up with this. So that's <laughs> first. It, it all it just it just tickles me, just to you know just to see that that's what it's called. Um, and two, again, the whole default on um, is is very con very concerning and a tangent kind of yes, definitely a tangent. Um, similar to. Um, I don't know if anybody noticed I, the days are running together. It was either earlier this week or the end of last week. Um, you were ceremoniously logged out of your Facebook account. Right. And you had to sign back in. Well, apparently what this did was uh, enable this new offline activity that Facebook has. And what it does is it tracks your anything that you do outside of Facebook um, I saw when I saw it go on, I was like, this is weird. Why is it logging me out? I was seeing it because I had logged into Facebook on my browser because um, because I, I had to I was looking at uh, messages or something. I rarely do. Someone said I sent you a message. Go look at the message. So I thought that's what it was. But I saw um, on someone's Instagram story that it pretty much everything that that person had done on their phone, it was tracked. And it's in this off off activity something or other. Right, I'm, go I'm going to find it right now. Yeah, fortunately, it is disabled for me because I have an iPhone and iPhone. Uh. With this, that's why they lock people out. So unfortunately, if you have an Android, you need to go in and turn off the setting. But if you have an iPhone and in the privacy settings of your iPhone, if you have it enabled for third parties to ask you to um, let me in, in the tracking, if it has, I'm not sure if you can see it, this setting, if you go to settings, uh -huh. if you go to tracking, uh, privacy, and then tracking, if you have this allow apps to request tracking on, this Facebook thing won't affect you. Because when I went and looked at what I was supposed to turn off, for this mm -hmm. um, feature, it was already disabled for me. Oh, so so let me ask you this question then. What about for the iPhone people who did not have this allow apps to request to track? And basically, like you said, if it with updated, this- then this problem would go off. Say what? You so said if they hadn't updated their um, OS, mm -hmm. then they're probably going to have to go in and manually do it. In the Facebook settings. In, in the Facebook settings. and. Let me see if I can remember where it was. If you go to Facebook uh, settings, I wonder if you can just search for off activity. It's called, no, you can't do it. But it's, it's called off activity. I'm trying to do it. I meant to pull this up 
Um, but you can see it from the actual, if you go into like your profile mm-hmm. and scroll down to settings and privacy, mm-hmm. and if you go to settings and then you scroll down to your Facebook information, you will see off Facebook activity. And this is what you need to one clear before you turn it off and then turn it off. Um, mine, I didn't have to do anything. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says your off Facebook activity is currently turned off. I didn't turn it off, but because I had that request, mm-hmm. you know, um, third party tracking on, I didn't have to do it. And this was essentially, from my understanding, Facebook's way of getting around Apple's tracking in the iOS 14 release. Okay, so that was an extra. I'm glad you, that's our third uh, story for this <laughs> because I'm definitely, I didn't, I I just assumed that I did something that logged me out and I didn't think twice of it and logged oh. right on back in. So I'm definitely going to, we're definitely going to highlight that to where, uh, okay, yeah, view or clear your off Facebook activity. All right. All right. right, and when you click on, you see your off Facebook activity is currently turned off. Mm-hmm. So then, yeah. So I saw someone posting earlier about oh the and the iPhone people something or other, and I'm like, well, but we're secure. Yeah, right. I think they were complaining. I think they were complaining about having to do something when it related to their security. Mm-hmm. And then I saw this on Instagram, and I was like, oh, let me go and check this. And luckily enough, this was a workaround so it seems i don't have any concrete proof but i'm surmising that as much of of a a a, a big stink that facebook made about this these new tracking um, features on the ios taking out the the full pages in all the newspapers you know doing the the crafty little shady um posts on on facebook on their on people's feeds this was their way of getting around it. So if you were ceremoniously signed out of your account and when you open your app, it asked you to sign back in, that's what that sign out was doing. That's basically when you sign back in, that was essentially your opt in to have them to track all of your information. And the girl who did the video, she was like, they had my bank information. They saw that I had logged into my bank. They had my bank information. She was like, every single website I had went to, they had it all. So it's not just enough to turn it off. Make sure you clear it first, mm-hmm. then turn it off. Yep. And then there's a manage future activity too. Your experience may be less personalized. I don't care. And the ads you see may be less relevant to you. I don't care. <laughs> I don't want to see the ads. Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, again, you know, for those who are not in the uh, snobbist Patreon group, we talked about this earlier as far as where our community is going to be. And this is just another reason why I really don't ain't feeling Facebook because <laughs> they be trying to get their hands in everything, everything you are doing and it's all because of data so don't let nobody tell you or don't think by you signing up for this new service or new program or new whatever that all they want to do is or the common thing I've heard people say well I'm assuming they already have my data I'm like well why would you give them more of it that's the common thing they say well you know, one, I ain't doing anything that's important anyway, number one. And then number two is like, well, you know, uh, they already know everything about me, so I might as well. I'm like, well, why would you give them more rope to tie you up with? <laughs> yep. Yep. So so watch your, I mean, definitely for, for the listeners that we have that are on Androids, um, we may do a post about it yeah. on the, the Snob OS because um, I think this is something that folks probably aren't aware of they probably saw that they were logged out and didn't think anything of it um when i saw it i did i was like oh that's weird but then i had just been on the website so i was like oh because i never log into the website maybe they thought you know it was somebody else logging in or, or something like that and they need me to verify nope it was just their sneaky sneaky way of getting you to unofficially unknowingly opt in for this off facebook activity all right all right well shout out to nika for the 
for the grab there. That's going to be our third story for uh, second string. And that's going to be Nika, Nika's uh, <laughs> tip for the week. Uh, so that's we'll, my hookup. Yeah, that's, yes. that, that's our hookup for the week, right? <laughs> All right. So that's it we have for uh, second string. Let's move into for the culture. Uh, again, we've talked about this a little bit about um, whether or not you know, we as in black people are either getting the money from startups or we are heavily contributing to the popularity of a company that then can go get billions and billions of dollars. Uh, case in point, uh, Clubhouse was recently um, valued at a billion dollars. Clubhouse is still in beta. It is only available for iPhone users. And it is voice only. There's no video. There's no pictures. There's no memes. There's no TikToks. There's no reels. Basically, it is a think of it as a uh, voice chat message board to where you can go in invite only. Rather, it's not open to the public. You have to be invited into Clubhouse and then you can kind of host or moderate or participate in these um, voice only message boards where people are talking about all kinds of things, whether it be it started off as for, you know, the, the tech industry, you know, venture capitalists and startup founders and all of these people to kind of come in and kind of network with each other. And then it's spread out to everybody else, specifically a lot of black folks I know who are using it for entrepreneurship. They're using it for, you know, uh, consulting. They're using it to do to network and basically, you know, um, now that it's opened up to the general public, i.e. people with iPhones who know about it and get invited. Now, all of a sudden, with all those things, like I said, it being in beta, iPhone only invite only, it's now being valued at a billion dollars. And Master P kind of made the uh, he's making the speculation that the reason why Clubhouse is now valued at a billion dollars is because the people at large, i.e. black folks, made Clubhouse what it is. And this is his quote. I keep telling people we go on Clubhouse. We making another one of them a billionaire. We just did it just for Clubhouse. We need to create stuff like that where we control the narrative and we're able to put money back in our community and our culture. So I wanted to ask you the question is Clubhouse, in your opinion, do you think Clubhouse is now this super popular billion dollar valuated app that isn't even out of beta? Did did black folks in general do that or is there something else at play? And then I guess the ex second question is, you know, is it possible for um, black folks to, or non or brown people, you know, can they create this similar effect and it have a same outcome as a clubhouse where we are doing all the support, where we are um, contributors, we are the creators and we are the ones that are benefiting. So Master P is not wrong that we made it popular because, I mean, honestly, that's just our culture. Whenever you bring black people in, we usually make things live. Mm -hmm. We usually take it up to the next level. So he was right on that point. Where I disagree with him is that where he states he keeps telling people that we need to invest in our own. We do invest in okay. our own. All we right. just got finished talking about um, in the in the snobbish show um, the amount of um, black startups that mm -hmm. we have. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, only about 3% of overall venture capital money goes to black people and, and brown people. And even smaller a number goes to black women. We do have venture funds that are black led. We have right here in Atlanta, Collab Capital. Um, we have um, Backstage Capital um, with um, uh, what, uh, Arlen. Oh, I'm going to mess up Arlen's last name because it's not coming to me. Um, Arlen uh, Hamilton, um, who whose fund is specifically for and similar to Backstage Capital, 
is geared toward black people, people of color, women, um, underrepresented groups. So we have companies out there who invest in black led funds. It's just that we don't nearly get as as the amount of money mm -hmm. that a clubhouse will get, that a Quibi will get. And I have to call him to the carpet a bit. He's talking about investing money into these things. He has a lot of money. Him and Baron Davis are trying to buy Reebok. Mm -hmm. So if you're so into it, you know, how about you slide over some money to a uh, backstage capital? Why don't you slide over some venture funds into um, collab capital? Mm -hmm. Black people have the technology. We have the ideas. We have the ability to create things like this. We just don't necessarily get the money, the funding for it. And these type of things take a significant amount of money. I don't know who came up with Clubhouse. I'm not sure where their money came from. Mm -hmm. But what I do know is they were able to go to someone with an idea. Mm -hmm and get this app made. And like you said, it's still in beta. It's still invite only. I have a couple of invites. I finally accepted it just because it was bugging me for it to be hanging out there. But I, I hadn't used a single, I haven't gone to a room. I I haven't, you know, don't have any fault. I haven't followed anybody or anything like that. It's just another thing that we are in and we've made popular. But at the same time, there is a black led clubhouse um, version called the cookout. Yeah, I saw that. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's the same thing. It's I saw it on Twitter a couple of days ago and I was like, let me go ahead and sign up. It's still it's an invite only. It's in a beta. I don't know anybody who's on it, so I don't know how it works. But I did want to give them the download of the app and I did want to give them the traffic of someone signing up. So we have these things, we have the ability to do these things, but at the same time, it takes money, it takes um, resources, it takes someone- Support. It's quote mm -hmm. unquote someone, a champion, mm -hmm. so to get you to the level of a clubhouse or a Quibi or any of the other thousands of ideas that people come up with with just a st uh, with the sticky note but in our and when i say our i mean black fun black lead you pretty much have to have a finished product to even get a 10 percent of the money that folks get with just a post-it note so you can't just put it on black people to say we aren't supporting our own or we aren't creating our own or we aren't doing it ourselves. It's a little we bit are. more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit more nuanced and similar to what I talked about earlier with people kind of coming down on Apple who asked for this, you know, unity thing, who asked for Harriet Tubman to be on the dollar bill. You're looking, you're reading the, the, the headline. You're not reading the article. Mm -hmm. so just, right. Right. Exactly. You looking at the nuance that it takes for these type of things, these types of companies, these types of app, this type of tech to get out there. It's it's easy to go on, you know, Twitter and do a hot take and get a bunch of likes and people, yeah, you're right, you're right, without any of these people knowing what it takes to actually get what the the quote unquote black version of Clubhouse out there. Right, right. And yeah. So no, no, I, I agree completely. Um and we are we do support, you know, there is a conversation amongst family, <laughs> you know, I use, you know, I use term loosely, you know, to where, you know, that, you know what family is, you know, right, right. To where, you know, uh, do we support black businesses because they're black or do we support them because they're good? And, you know, the conversation of, OK, well, when a black owned business messes up, you know, gets an order wrong, ships something, do something negative, whatever the case may be, we say, OK, well, that's why I don't support black businesses. But then turn around if a, you know, non black business messes up something, you know, gets an order wrong, same type of thing. You know, we we don't tend to give them the same, you know, uh, we don't hold them to the same rules and laws and you know, actions. So there is that conversation there. But as a whole, in general, we do support. And like Nika mm -hmm. mentioned, we talked about a company, 
you know, that is value. They're they're a three billion dollar valuation and they are a a successful company. They're making money and they and the icing on cake is their black owned, you know, black led, black founded. And, you know, there are a bunch of other um, uh, 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 movements that mm-hmm. are being uh, started that we are supporting. You know, we talked about Angela Benton's, you know, Streamlytics, you mm-hmm. know, that we supported. You know, me and my wife are in several uh, small uh, crowdfunding support. Not not even crowdfunding. It's, uh, you know, uh, it is crowdfunding, but specifically uh, crowdfunded for businesses founded and led by black people. So we are figuring out alternative ways to support and alternative ways to raise capital and they are getting funded. You know, we were talking about Angela Benton in, uh, in general, in specific, the fact that they were able to raise a million dollars on just crowdfunding alone, you know, a million plus, you know, so that's mm-hmm. going to then in like a day or so. Right. And that's going to then help them get that cachet, get that um, standing to where they'll be taken seriously. Not to say they weren't taken seriously and before, you know, I'm using air quotes for the people who are listening. But, you know, that's going to give them the flexibility, the ability to be looked at by some of these bigger companies looking to use their data because they have this support and this foundation that, you know, other companies may not have. Right. So right. we do support, you know, I think one of uh, uh, Master P's comments was black people don't support. You know, we do. And we are out there, you know, constantly, you know, supporting things, you know, even sometimes just because they are black, you know, because, you know, the, that's the, and not to get into it any deeper, you know, but the whole, you know, white privilege thing, you know, it speaks to the point to where you don't have to worry about supporting a company that looks like you because all the companies look like you, look like you. right you know there's a there's something to be said to where me as a black person you know i go and i look for a company or i look for a service and my second thought after saying hey i need this service my second thought is i wonder if they're black owned you know or I wonder if i can mm-hmm. find the black owned equivalent to this thing that i know is already out there you know um, the reason why we do that is because we don't have the privilege of being able to walk out of our house and the very first business we run up on is a white owned business. You know, there, there's a privilege there that we don't have. So, you know, and the, that's the second part. And that's the second part of the equation. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows about Clubhouse. Right. Everybody mm-hmm. knows. No. The only way I knew about the cookout was it happened. Someone talked, said it on my on my uh, Twitter timeline. Mm-hmm. And we're reading it from this article that talks about it, but it's in complex. And both of these things are, you know, my my Twitter feed is, you know, heavily in black Twitter. Mm-hmm. And complex is a heavily viewed black source. Mm-hmm. So the, the second part to the equation is, you know, there are these companies out there, but how do we know about them? Right. We have to proactively go and seek out and dig through some of the rubble Mm -hmm. to even find them. So it's not necessarily of the the point of not supporting. It's not even knowing that it's even out there to support. Exactly. All right. Good points all around. You know, like I said, we'll keep an eye on this. I definitely, well, I'm not because I am a social media out. (laughs) <laughs> so I haven't even thought about a clubhouse, you know, people, I see people all the time, people I know, I got invites, I got invites and it's like, I am social media. I cannot join. I'm already burnt out from the ones I got. I do <laughs> not want to join, not near one other anything. So, and I'm I, probably not even giving out my invites cause I don't even go on it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you can miss me with the, you gotta be on clubhouse. No, I don't. And I'm not, I'm going to, even if I, even if there is some benefit there, I am purposely le- not getting on because if you, if you can't, if I can't get it done with what I already got, I don't need to be done. So that's just, that's just me personally. <laughs> All right. So that is it for, for the culture. Let's move into our hookup section. Like we mentioned, Nika already gave us her hookup on turning off 
the off Facebook activity in Facebook. So where Facebook cannot track you off of Facebook, like if you're on uh, anything else on your phone. Yeah, of course, I don't know the details, but if you're on another website, if you're using another app, if you're using another service, Facebook with this new feature that they slid in there, you know, can track that functionality. So uh, that's Nika's hookup. Turn that off <laughs> uh, for my. Yeah, right. <laughs> for my hookup, um, I recently added HomeKit to my garage door. So uh, previously, I added the MyQ um, smart garage door opener, which will enable me to use an app to lock and or not open and close my garage door and that app connected to uh, Alexa to where I could say, hey, Alexa, you know, is my for is my garage door closed? She would, you know, check the current status and say yes or no. And then, you know, a couple other features. But I really wanted to use Siri because, like I mentioned, I have to open the MyQ app in order to open and shut the door. So I wanted to be able to do that from my devices, you know, iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch. So I added the MyQ HomeBridge. So that's my hookup for this week. It's about 90 bucks. It is in Amazon. But if you add this on to the MyQ smart garage door opener, it will enable you to give you HomeKit functionality to where I can use now, I can now use the Home app and actually use that to um, uh, open and close my garage door. And I also can use Siri now. So I'm gonna do my little switch over here so you can actually see what it looks like. So this is the LiftMaster MyQ home bridge like i said it's an amazon for about 80 80 bucks but if you add this on to the my q smart garage door opener you get siri so that is my hookup for the week we will definitely put a link to the show notes to where you can actually check that out if you're so interested or you can hit me up on social media and let me know uh, i'll give you some more details about that so i think that is it for this week if you don't have anything else nika we're going to Go ahead and end the show there. So definitely, definitely, yeah, definitely do us a favor. You can download, rate, and review us. We are on Apple Podcasts. We're on Google Podcasts, and we're on Spotify. Definitely download it. Definitely rate us. You know, please drop a review. That helps us climb up the rankings in the different podcast channels. Uh, definitely engage with us on Twitter. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We're at SnobOSCast. Uh, you can definitely watch us on YouTube. Uh, we will be posting our shows up weekly. Uh, we're on YouTube at SnobOS Cast. Be sure if you're watching it, give us a like. Definitely subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. So when we upload the show to YouTube, you'll get a notification when that is ready. If you want to reach out to us on the web, you can do so via our website. We're at SnobOSCast.com. And we're at email at snoboscast at gmail.com. So if you want to leave a comment or review, you want to give us some feedback, you want to give us some, some constructive criticism, uh, you can do that there. Uh, finally, if you want to support the show, we've got a couple ways you can do that. You can join our Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash snoboscast. For as little as $5 a month, you'll get access to our pre-show. You'll get access to the pre-show and the actual live taping of our show. Uh, and you'll get access to our private community. Uh, finally, if you don't want to do the $5 a month and you want to give us our love offering, you can do so via PayPal. You can do so via paypal.me forward slash snob OS. So if you want to leave us, leave us a, a dollar or two, you heard something that you identified with and you want to show us some love, that one time love, you can do so via PayPal. So other than that. That is it for this week, and we are out of here. Bye.